Welcome back to another information packed episode on Ready Set Real Estate. I am your show host, Lisa Gillette. Can you tell I'm excited? I am so excited about doing today's topic. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let me throw it up here now so that you can invite and tell everybody and share and tell them we're, we're, we're going to talk about something that needs to be talked about. The elephant in the room type conversations, the frog in the room type conversations, somebody needs to hear it type of conversation. Yes. Episode 207, buying a house won't fix your relationship. Okay. Melanie Peters is in the building. She says, hello, Lisa. Hello, Melanie. Uh, it's, um, it, it, it occurred to me to revisit this love and home ownership series that I've done in the past. And it's a new year, new me. So a lot of you are feeling brand new. So that's wonderful. And new relationships have come out of COVID. Some have uh, not survived COVID or I should say the pandemic. We're now moving, I'm hearing, we are now moving to the endemic phase of the pandemic, of this whole thing. So some of you have had uh, new babies. Some of you have had new jobs. Oh my gosh, so many life events. And it's one of my favorite quotes that I borrowed from being in the life insurance industry. And I noticed that with every life event triggers a, a life insurance need, right? Because, you know, death, new baby, new family member, marriage, divorce, that whole thing. Same goes with real estate. So same goes with real estate. I am so fortunate and blessed to see these parallels, just like I'm seeing the parallels in real estate along with the legal industry. I'm just having a whale of a time. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you tell? So... I think we need to invite more people today to tune in. Now, if you are checking us for the first time, if you're tuning in for the very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Like I said, we're on episode 207, but the channel probably has close to over 600 episodes on personal development, on real estate, and some other stuff that I've thrown on there in the past. Recently, we've just focused on real estate. I used to do the Shift Your Thinking show. Now, because of my schedule, I'm only sticking to committing to one show per week. And this is what we've been doing. So we're here. I'm here for this. You here for this? I am. I'm here for this. All right. So for those of you who are new to me, I am an active real estate broker, owner of Devenio Estates, uh, serving the Southern California uh, community. And what's interesting is uh, I am I am an active broker in Georgia, or I should say I'm licensed in Georgia. I'm not quite active in Georgia. So I want to give that disclaimer, although I have been doing consultations, though. So I'm here for it. Also, what else? Um, so Devenio, broker owner, pricing strategy advisor, short sales and foreclosure certified and experienced. And what's near and dear to me is working with the senior and youth community, of course, everyone. But, you know, I've got a little extra love and passion that I pour into my senior. So I do hold a senior real estate specialist designation. All that means is I'm trained to work with our seniors, especially when it comes to uh, listing, preparing their property for sale and for them to downsize or relocate to the next phase in their lives so that they can uh, being a place and space where aging in place is more safe, it's more comfortable, and they're more in a supportive environment to do that. So a lot of our seniors are making this transition to age in place. So age in place is either happening in the home environment or it's happening outside of the home environment, depending what uh, kind of what their health is and where the, what the state of their, not just their physical health, but their mental health as well. All right. Ooh, I feel so good. You feel good? I feel great. I feel really great. What else? What else do I want to do? Announce. Oh, announcements. So announcements. We do have a workshop coming up. So our real estate classes, our community real estate classes are happening every month. Fourth Saturdays of each month, we are focusing on the how to undo a reverse mortgage. Again, this would go hand in hand with my, my passion for the senior community. And so this would go hand in hand with that. Talking about how to do un undo reverse mortgages. Let me actually find the thingy. You know, I've got a flyer on here somewhere. I've got to get, I've got to give you a flyer. I've got to give you a flyer. Um, I think what's better is I'll do a screen share. 
duh, screen shares are easier. So that way I don't have to go through the whole, you know, whole disappearing off the screen. So boom, screen share. So this is our next class that's coming up. You definitely want to register. Um, Melanie says, you look great too. Thank you. You see my hair growing? I'm just letting it grow out. Look, it's just doing its thing right now. <laughs> it's just doing its thing. So with uh, thank you, thank you. I I want to drop the event website. Oh gosh, where it is? Oh, it's right here. It's already there. Okay. So real estate life.events for our radio podcast listeners who are tuning in. Uh, what's really cool is the platforms. Let's say if you're on Spotify, it allows you to watch the video as well. So video's fun, uh, but but no, you know, no, no harm, no loss, of course, if you can't tune in on the video. You've got the radio here. You can tune in and connect with us on our radio podcast as well. That is usually uploaded after the show. So you're not catching us live on the radio podcast, but you are catching us still uh, direct on our platform. So so let me just jump into this, this topic here of how to undo a reverse mortgage, avoid foreclosure upon the death of a senior borrower or senior property owner who has taken out a reverse mortgage. I noticed this is like, um, I, Melanie, Melanie, you, you, you know, you just, you're, you're encouraging me. <laughs> She's like, love the hair. I noticed it. Thank you. All right. Back, back to the business, back to serious business. <laughs> okay. So, and this is serious business. Okay. So let me, let me just kind of uh, sharpen my tone here and be uber sensitive to this topic because it is something we we've, we've got to talk about, uh, and some, some people have not done the estate planning, right? Or some people uh, in particular, there's such a big misconception when they do reverse mortgages as property owners. They say the bank owns my home. It's not my home anymore. The bank owns it. That's not true. It's still your home. You still, your name is still on the title. You just borrowed money, right? You've just taken the equity and you've reversed how that works. And, and it's a way for you to tap into the equity and pay yourself either lump sum or over a period of time. And that period of time is until the date of your death. That's when the reverse mortgage uh, becomes due and payable upon that event. And or if you are moved to uh, out of the home within six months uh, or excuse me, out of the home for six months or, or placed in a permanent uh, uh, permanent housing, such as a convalescent home. ERGJ in the building, my brother Everett Jefferson is in the building. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we were having here, uh, Melanie and I were having fun here uh, talking about just, just feeling great, just feeling great. Just I'm, I've noticed that I have not been in this like rush to do, right? Like in this more... I stick with, I stick with the plan. So I've got a, a, I've got my own planner and I write my activities. In fact, my calendar is mapped until next year because I need to know like, you know, finals and exams, midterms. But Evan and I have had this conversation offline where we've talked about like just the focus. So for me, it's marketing school and, um, the marketing school and business, right? Marketing school and business, marketing school and study. I think it's what it, what it is. I just, it's three areas that I focus on. So continually marketing the business, right? That that's got to keep going. That's the lifeline of your business is the marketing aspect. Then there's the, of course, um, for me, personal goal is the study aspect of it and my health. In fact, I must share, <laughs> I was going to upload this post of my weight too, because you know, you know, your girls gained some weight, all my happy weight, all my COVID weight, all pandemic weight. And I had got to a weight where I said, enough is enough. Anyone has gotten to that point or place in your life where you're like, enough is enough. Well, I reached that point and I was like, oh, enough is enough. I've got to do something. And let me say this, nothing, put this in the comment, nothing changes if nothing changes. Nothing changes if nothing changes, right? And I I had to change. I had to make a decision to work within what I could control, and that was my eating habits. So I completely, thanks to my husband, 
we've been juicing and really have explored a lot more of the vegetarian options, the raw options. And I must say, I have lost eight pounds. I am so happy and so re-inspired because it's not, I wasn't, I haven't been uh, weight watching. I have, I have just been focusing on what I need to do. And of course, noticing how my clothes has fit, right? It fits differently. I've got more room. And so I've just been focusing on that. So yes, at, we are going to take this win, Melanie. Yes, eight pounds. And I feel so great. I do have a goal to, to go back to um, my original weight. I was like one, 145. So yeah, you know, I gained like 37 pounds during that those years. And so I'm patient with myself, right? Because it took me years to gain it. So to put myself through an extreme that I'm going to lose this weight in six weeks, eight weeks. No, I, I'm not going to do that silliness. With time and commitment and consistency, I will see those results. And so that's why I share with you, I'm openly sharing with you that for me, this is a win. We're going to take it. And for if anyone who who's feeling like in that stuck and just things are not happening fast enough, love on yourself. Know that it's not this overnight. You know, Prince is known for quoting, uh, what, what's what's the quote that everybody looks at an overnight success and doesn't realize that it takes 10 and 12 years to be that success? <laughs> exactly. Evan says, patient with myself. She preaching. Yeah. That's how you know, you know, I just, I, I'm, I'm in this space and I'm feeling it. I'm just feeling all great. And so I want to uh, exude that. I want to communicate that and share with you what I've been doing behind the scenes. Yeah, I may not post as much as I've done before, but Evan and I have talked about this as well. Life is nice offline. It is. Life is nice offline. I enjoy and love my online community. But this is why we're doing the in-person workshops, right? In-person workshops like this one that's happening on May 27th is so we can create that true sense of community. We've learned that there's a group of people that do well online. And there's also another group of people that have suffered by trying to be, you know, keeping up with online. So I want to make sure that I am serving both sides, my online community and my offline community so that the people feel heard, connected, and that we are really um, just providing that service all around. So thank you for chiming in. Thank you for listening. And I trust that I will see you, right? I will see you. No, I'm not a pointer, but I am speaking uh, to you and with you that will, you'll be there May 27 for this because you need this information. If you keep talking about this generational wealth, and you're not doing anything about how to protect it, how to grow it, how to build it, then you're just talking. And talking is not doing, right? Talking is not trying. All right. Melanie says, I gained pandemic weight too, Lisa. It's okay. Just I think once we start acknowledging that it's happened, nothing changes if nothing changes. So do something about it, right? Evan shares, everyone that's connected to you is vibing the same. Love it. Mwah. Love it. I love that we're all vibing the same. Uh, he says, the spirit runs through. Absolutely. Yes. Amen to that. Ashe, Ashe. Ooh. I'm, I'm saying, I just feel this is, ooh, I'm feeling this one. I'm feeling this one today. Okay. So we are doing, uh, you, you know how we do classroom style before we do that. So again, I invite you to share, let somebody know we're on. So we're going to come back after this commercial break. Press one lets me know you're here. Press two. Let's me know you shared it. Let someone know. Shout out to those of you who are streaming on our uh, associate channels, uh, partner channels like ERGJ, those who are tuning in from the BBC, those are who are tuning in from um, um, uh, Black in LA events. Who else is on here? Those tuning in on our official Facebook watch channel. Yes, we are a Facebook watch channel. So we will see you right back after this sponsor break. Let me bring that back. Clicking buttons. Shout 
shameless plug here. This is, in fact, let me, where is, where is the hard copy? What did I do with the hard? So I have a hard copy of this book, but this is one of our award-winning books, best-selling author, co-author, uh, Anthony Lee, Real Estate 100, The Teen and Millennial Investment Blueprint. Grab your copy, grab your copy. In fact, Anthony, I've got to reconnect with you as well. Um, just talk about some stuff about this. This book has been doing wonders. This book has been doing wonders, not just for my family, because I actually, okay, so let me share this. So I've, I've actually gone to my own notes in this book. And here's why, because Evan, I see your question, so I'm gonna get to it real quick. Uh, I wanted to share this real quick because my business has pivoted to including property management. So we're managing rentals, um, just expanding and revisiting that, okay? because it's the market, right? It's just the market. And so I've gone to this here. Look at this. This is a spreadsheet for um, just the expenses, table of monthly expenses when you are uh, managing property, income property, the, the expenses when people say, oh, you buy this house and buy this investment and make sure you charge this rent to cover your mortgage. But Mortgage is one line item. See, there's a list of things here that needs to be factored in with that. Okay, so I've gone to that book. There's gems. I feel like we've got to expand that, right? Uh, Ebony says one and two. She's here and she shared it. Evan says, what is that Monopoly board behind you? Should I talk about? So let me just share. Just thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Those of you who've connected with me know I'm very intent on writing things down, planning it. In fact, my, my husband's grandmother, shout out to Miss Eunice, uh, my husband's grandmother bought a, uh, she, a just, she just loves cups, right? She just all kind of little cups and different sayings, little coffee mugs and cups. And she shared with, shared me, shared with me the one she purchased yesterday and, uh, Happy Mother's Day to those of you who are celebrating. This is the Mexican Mother's Day today for those who in the, within the Latinx culture, Latino culture. Happy Mother's Day. I know we'll celebrate on this weekend that Happy Mother's Day coming up. So she bought this mug that says, I, I like it. I see it. I see it. I like it. I want it. I manifest. And so to your question, Evan, this Monopoly board was something I created from a news article published by the LA Weekly. And it was a news piece that I was so enamored with just kind of what it was conveying. And it says, when Wall Street is your landlord, how one publicly traded company is making a killing by renting, by renting thousands of single family homes in LA and beyond. So if you recall, there was a period in the market Everyone was talking about the shadow inventory during the housing crisis bust that all these foreclosures were supposed to hit the market, but they never did. And that's why it, it, this is why right here is because Wall Street figured out how to create a nice little annuity plan for themselves. And they packaged those properties and they became rental properties. And in fact, I did on my last workshop. Let me find my notes real quick. On my last workshop, this is the, these are the statistics. Uh, for those of you who didn't make the how to purchase a foreclosure, how to buy foreclosures, um, I'm going to share a snippet with you of how many of those properties. Do, 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 do. So. How many of those properties became corporate owned? In fact, it was. There were. Um, oh, my gosh, I can't find the notes. That's such a bummer. Ugh, it's such a bummer. But easily we're talking about, I want to say it was like 82,000 properties that will no longer hit the market as a potential how to purchase uh, uh, excuse me evan <laughs> um those properties won't become owner occupied properties those are now rental so it's a lost opportunity and so in terms of manifesting uh, when i this this article was november 2017 
And I said to myself, when I get my own office and when I come up, you know, when I create my own company, I'm going to put this in my office. And here I am, fast forward years later, I'm in my own office. This is a very personal piece to me. And execute, y'all. Just write it down, execute, just focus. Focus, focus, focus. That that's that's what I have to share. Just focus. It's, it's so important. Okay. So Evan says, Melanie says, one, I'm here. How can I take the foreclosure class now? Well, I'm glad you asked, Evan. Go ahead and sign up and get added to our list of real estate life dot events. We'll send you an email so you can sign up, register, and catch the replay if you missed the live. I'll drop the link in the video in the chats here. <laughs> ah, Evan is Evan's no joke, y'all. Evan's gonna hold you accountable to to your stuff. He's gonna make sure. He's gonna make sure you're on it. Real estate life dot events. Okay, so real estate life dot events. Sign up. Yes, you can sign up. Get on the list. So when you go there, it'll take you to our real estate classes link. Um, there's various way or. Uh, Melanie says, yes, the link or my favorite is lasuperagent.com. I know Melanie's like, Evan's the best. You can always go to lasuperagent.com. And the beautiful thing about going to lasuperagent.com. So, of course, I'm going to do the shameless plug because Evan is asking for more. Evan is asking for more. So shameless plug. When you go to lasuperagent.com, you'll see here. Um, Boom, right? So how to use, how to, how to undo reverse mortgages as a class. There's a link there. Look at that. 2023 real estate classes go there. You need a consult to need a seller buy a property. Submit a question to be answered on the live show. You can submit your questions. You need a live consultation, creative consult, tune in, order the book, subscribe, want to become a self indie published author. There's a course there for that by yours truly. I give you the game. Um, you're an agent, you want to become a success partner, a referral partner, or join our brokerage. There's a link for that. And of course, custom ready set real estate materials, and you can shop our bookstore. Evan, happy? <laughs> Listen, I, I'm ready. I stay ready. Okay. Just in case someone asks me for a link, I'm ready. Okay. Don't, don't, don't test me. Don't test me. Because, you know, people like to say, I'm not the one. I tell people, I'm just not, I'm not the average one. I am the right one, okay? I am the right one. I'm not the one. I'm, no, no, no. I am the right one. All right. You are all, I'm having so much fun with this. I'm going to really have fun with this conversation. Why? Is because some people think buying a house is going to fix their relationship and their problems. Not going to happen. You can't, you can't buy stuff. You can't keep buying things. You can't placate. You can't use things as a sedative, especially as a house, as a sedative for all the underlying issues that are already there. If you've got underlying issues, you've got to work through that. So here's what I'd like to offer in today's session. Five things that you need to discuss with your partner before you discuss home partnership. Not home ownership, home partnership for my couples and those of you who are in coupledom, considering coupledom. I oftentimes find that when I'm in my consultations and I ask the questions, because the questions I have to ask and get into are questions like very easily, questions like, do you owe child support? And then the person will look over and be like, uh, yeah, wait a minute. Why do I, me, the broker, the professional, why am I asking the question about child support, spousal support? What's your, what's, what's on your credit, right? Couple them. If we want to break, build these kingdoms and build generational wealth, see that comes through union and partnerships successful union and partnerships and of all the all the couples that i've ran into that i've been fortunate to connect with who've been married for 40 50 60 70 years 
have said communication is key. Communication is key. They have shared compromise. <laughs> Evan says, oh, this is going to be good. You know, I'm here for it. Is this the he say, she say show? <laughs> right. Re the real estate spinoff on it, right? <laughs> the real estate spinoff. So I find that I'm asking the hard questions. And sometimes if you do need a mediator, and that's why I do, I am an advocate of therapy and counseling. I am an advocate, advocate of therapy and counseling as someone who's gone through therapy and counseling. I am an advocate of bringing a mediator, bringing someone involved who doesn't have, you know, the saying a dog in, a, in that fight. I don't have a dog in that fight. They don't, they're not biased either way, but can truly hear what is being conveyed. What are the issues here? What are we discussing? Okay. So buying a house won't fix your relationship. Uh, Melanie says, I was about to say the same thing, Evan. He say, she say, yep. For those of you who are unfamiliar, there is a great, great uh, uh, show Evan hosts. Uh, in fact, I heard you announce that you're bringing it back. So that's awesome. So budget and financing. Number one, let's talk about budget and financing. Discuss how much you each can afford, not how much you can afford. And then you're tagging along. You're riding, you're going along for the ride. Discuss how much you each can afford. How much can you contribute to the down payment? Let's just pause there. Do you have a savings towards the down payment? Don't, don't send me a link or send your partner a link to some Instagram advisor and guru who's telling you you can buy with no money down. No money down affects your mortgage expense. It's called your housing expense. Write these things down. Don't let your Instagram advisor lead you down this path of nowhere. <laughs> and you know who are your TikTok people and whatnot. There's some, you know, there's some people who are really doing some great work and some giving some great advice and sharing the real. And there's some other people who are doing this for entertainment. So you, you've got to be careful for that. You've got, you see that little, this little search icon? <laughs> Go and search, go and look it up. So how much can you contribute to down payment, mortgage, and other expenses? Other expenses are those ongoing expenses, i.e. utility bills. You're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. Make sure your water and power bills are current. Uh, I mean, I just, I'm amazed at kind of what, what people are doing and choosing. Depending what state you're in, I've learned that your utility bill past due for a long period of time. I don't, I'm not sure what the window is. They record a lien on your house and have foreclosure rights to foreclose on your property for past due utility bills. California doesn't do that or else a lot of people would be foreclosed on. So think about that. This is the important part here. How do you plan this right here? How do you plan to split these costs? Is it a 50-50? How do you feel about the 50-50? Oh, I want to hear about you. I want to hear about this. How do you feel about that? One partner makes more than the other partner. Should these housing expenses be split 50-50 down the middle? What's fair? What's reasonable? You'll hear me use this term a lot more as I pursue my my legal studies, right? Reasonable. What's reasonable? Is it reasonable for the person who's not making as much as the six-figure earner, the five-figure earner, whether you're in the low, mid, or high in those brackets, to be paying down the middle? What is fair and reasonable? How do you split these costs? Because oftentimes that is where the stress comes from. Your mortgage, $1,500, $2,200, dollars $3,500, you're splitting it down the middle, that could be easily that person's paycheck. It's a whole paycheck for them. And they're strapped for cash until their next pay period. 
those are stressors. Those are real life stressors. So these are the things on budget and financing you should be bringing up. Let's have that conversation. Let's create that space for it. Two, finding the location. So both of you should agree on location. Discuss the proximity to work, family, and friends. How important is commute to work? How important is being close to parents, family, you know, parents, siblings, and friends, maintaining your social life, your friendships? Does your partner even like your family? Do they want to be near your family? Do they even like your friends? Oh, they don't know you have friends? <laughs> yes, need to have these conversations. You're trying to be near your best friend, your BFF, and your partner can't stand them. They want to be as far as away possible because they said without your friends, you're good. Or without your parents, you're good, right? And just think about it. See, I just, my husband and I just watched a film last night. Um, it was The Glass Castle. Very interesting spin and perspective based on true story. And the toxicity she had between her parents' relationship and her relationship growing up and how that affected her would-be marriage. Her fiance said, you're fine. You don't need them in your life. And she had to deal with that. She's had to deal with that. Discuss the neighborhood safety and amenities. Number three, home preferences and needs. Discuss your preference for the type of home you want to buy. Like I said, that elephant in the room, that frog keeps popping up every now and then. How many number of bedrooms and bathrooms is important? What's reasonable? We do this activity with our youth in our real estate youth boot camp. Um, I will be announcing the dates, by the way, the end of this month, we're lining up the venue. So I'm just confirming where I'm going to host it. Either I'm going to host the boot camp in our conference room here, or I'm going to use another venue space. We're bringing the real estate youth boot camp. And this is one of the things we talk about is what's reasonable, what's practical. I have them do a dream building activity. Oftentimes they come up with needing, you know, six bedrooms and eight bathrooms. And I'm like, okay, starting out, do you really need that? So you should be having the same loving conversation with your partner. Do you really need that? Outdoor space, is it important, right? Man cave or the she shed, are these must haves or are these just your wants? Number four, discuss your long-term goals. Discuss the long game and what's the plan? What's your plan? What's their plan? Now, if you feel uncomfortable discussing your plans with this person that is a partner, uh, then you shouldn't be discussing home partnership. If you don't feel comfortable or feel you can trust in conveying and sharing what your long-term plans are. See, because when we start talking about home partnership, we've got to, we're talking about living, right? This is 30 year commitment. Not everyone's keeping a 30 year mortgage, but you're going to be in it for about a good, you know, maybe seven to 15 years. And that's even a question. Another question is whether you plan to start a family. For those of you who are looking at price points that may get you that starter home, and it might just be a one bedroom. It might just be a two bedroom. Will it be enough in the event you want to start a family? I've had clients quickly grow, outgrow their starter homes. But it made sense for them to start because then when the market is good, they can use that equity, buy, buy and trade up. Take the equity from the proceeds, sell, take the money from the proceeds and Use it as a down payment to buy bigger, get the bigger space. Are you prepared to do that? I've seen couples not prepared to do that. They want what they want, and it makes the it makes the journey to home partnership that much more difficult. 
live in the house for the next five, 10 or 20 years. Discuss as part of your long-term goal, as I shared, how long do you plan to live in the house before you either decide to sell? The new five years is now 10 years. People are staying in their homes for 10 years before considering the sell. And those of you who purchase a house thinking you're going to fix the relationship, what you've now, now created is something out of necessity. Now you're together because of necessity versus something out of health, right? Something out of building wealth together. You've created out of necessity. You can't even leave each other because you can't afford to do anything else. Yes, I've seen it, heard it, dealt with it, sold it. Legal matters, number five. Ooh, short, sweet, and simple. I love when it's short, sweet, and simple. Legal matters. Discuss the ownership structure. How are you purchasing this property? Joint tenancy, tenants in, tenants in common. Is it still a home partnership if you don't qualify for the loan, but you get added to the title? You're not on the loan, but you're on the title. Is it still a home partnership if you're added to the loan? Well, you still have to be on title. But in that example, is it still home partnership if you're not on the loan? Meaning you're not obligated to pay that loan, but your partner is obligated for the loan as well as being on title. You're not obligated to the loan, but you get the bulk of the benefit, which is you're on title. Being on title gives you quite a bit of power, meaning you can do what is called force a sale, a partition. What happens if one partner wants to sell or if the relationship ends? I'm going to put Ebony's, because that's one of those moments right there. Where, what happens if one partner wants to sell or if the relationship ends? Those are called partition sales. There's a group of real estate investors I've learned in New York that is scamming people out of their home. It's kind of like a ring. It, it is a scam, but it's not a scam because it's perfectly legal. So side note real quick, I'm, I'm just going to share this real quick because my sis Trinity from New York shared this with me. And so I want to talk about it real quick. So do know if somebody as an heir inherits a property as an heir, and it's like a one fifth of a property, if they hold whatever piece of interest and they sell it to an investor and an investor now owns that interest, they can now force the sale on the remaining heirs of that property. As we're talking about structure and legal matters, the ownership does matter. Because when we do nothing and we pass away in, you know, intestate, meaning without a will or, you know, there's a trust and the trust is challenged and now the trust is tied up in litigation. See, there are investors who will prey on that. They will prey on the fact that you don't get along with your family and say, well, sell me your interest. You want to cash out? I can pay you cash today. Clearly nothing near what you would get if you write out the process. But if you want the cash today, you don't want to deal with your family members, your relatives, you or you want to stick it to them, an investor will serve that purpose. And they will force the sale on the other family owners. And so I was reading this article that, uh, again, that was shared with me that's happening in New York, especially with the properties in the Brownstone uh, community or district uh, that has been targeting black and brown homeowners and what this real estate investor or this, this scheme of investors, a pool of investors, what they are doing is tracking down the inheritors of those properties, the heirs of those properties, and buying their fractional interests and forcing the sale. So $16,000 and you cash out, you know, $255,000, half a million. That's a pretty nice investment. Unfortunately, it's at the expense of people. It's at the expense of ignorance and the ignorance I mean in terms of just not knowing. It's not really understanding. This is why we do the show, right? Melanie says, hashtag replay. Absolutely. Frowned upon, frowned upon. Yes. 
So consult with a lawyer to protect your interests. What we do is share what I do, and I go as far as sharing the various types of vesting that you can take ownership in a property. What most people don't realize when you purchase a home, in that paperwork and on that contract, you are already deciding what is going to happen to that house when you die. Let me say it again for the people in the back. When you buy a property, the real estate purchase agreement already stipulates how you complete it, how your name is. There's a paragraph that says title investing, and it already stipulates, right? There's a clause in there that you are going to stipulate what happens to this property when you pass away. This is why when you're asked to complete your vesting, you should do a little research to understand whether what your intention is aligns with also with what your partner wants. Yeah, Melanie bloodsuckers, they're out here in every aspect, every business, right? Okay, we're gonna wrap it up here because <clears throat> this was fun and I'm feeling great. I'm feeling on top of the world today. <laughs> So, of course, if you have questions, shameless plug, reach out. I am an active real estate broker and here for those. Um, currently, what I've been working on, so I'm working on home retention, home ownership retention. Uh, a lot of our seniors, a lot of folks coming out of this pandemic since the mortgage moratorium has ended. That means the banks are now moving forward on foreclosing on properties. So notice of defaults and those trustee sales are going out there. The dates for the auctions are being set. So what my current projects have been is assisting home ownership, um, excuse me, homeowners in retaining their property. So we're going through the options of forbearance plans, loan modifications, using um, the California mortgage relief funds to help them get caught up and fill in that, that gap with those, those payments. So I suggest if you or someone you know is in that scenario, have them call me or connect with a real estate advisor that is an advocate of home ownership retention. Um, if you get caught up with the wrong person, oh my gosh, let me fix this. <laughs> I just noticed the number was a typo. Don't call that number. I don't know who that is. <laughs> like, what is that? Let's bring it back again. Let's bring it back. I'm like, what was that? Okay. Also, I'll, you know me. I'll read it out anyway. I'm just, I'm just sharing in context right now as we wrap up the show. Uh, so definitely, if you have questions, you're going through it. Same with purchasing, home partnership. You've got to have those discussions. Got to have those discussions. In fact, I think for those of you who are the home partnership couple. I'm going to turn this nice little presentation to an ebook and I'll make it a downloadable ebook for those of you who are interested in and in just preparing it ahead. Use it as a talking point so that you and your partner can have this conversation. And if you want to bring somebody on board, definitely happy to join the conversation and be that advisor. Right. So let's get into the habit of, of recognizing our advisors and bringing them a part of the team and conversation. I will end here with this. Know who your top five is, your top five. This is how we protect, grow, and connect our wealth. I'm going to end with this here, people. Our top five. Your top five is, is, is what makes you powerful here is your fits, right? Your top five. Know who your PCP is. Your PCP is a primary care physician and or your herbalist your holistic doctor, your holistic practitioner, know who to go to, your financial advisor, your financial planner, your financial strategic planners, know who they are. Your insurance advisor oftentimes might be your financial planner as well, offer you some insurance products, but your insurance advisor will know how to protect those assets. Your real estate advisor, real estate attorney, your lawyer, excuse me, not your real estate advisor, attorney, lawyer, your lawyer, your attorney can be a general practitioner um, or can be specific because lawyers do uh, will have a certain niche in, of an area of law that they practice. So have an attorney that knows what you're attempting to do. 
And of course, my favorite is your real estate advisor. Know who your super agent is, know who your broker, your real estate broker professional is uh, so that they can also guide you in your real estate assets, um, your real property. That's either your real estate, your residential, your commercial, maybe having a pivot to renting that property, maybe wanting to buy storefront or going the other direction. You own a commercial building and now you've been renting and now you want to leverage the commercial asset to purchase your primary residence, right? You can go different ways with that. Or like I've had a client reach out to me and he wants to leverage his home equity, right? So he can uh, do debt consolidation. So just being able to have someone that you trust, that you know is an advocate, is there to guide you, is a game changer. So know who your top five is, okay? And that that makes um, that makes for a powerful uh, move and play as you are on this journey to uh, health and building your wealth. With that, I say have a fantastic week. We'll catch you next week on another information packed episode on Ready Set Real Estate. Bye. <laughs>